Hello again. About a year ago, I bought an Alatai slice from a fellow in China. And it was advertised as a nice piece. And when I received it, it wasn't so nice. And I'm going to show you the process I went through of cleaning it up, what it looked like before, during, and after, and the re-etching process I went through. So uh, I'm going to show each step of the way. So let's get to it. This is a photo of the Alatai slice as it was advertised. 206 grand piece, no rust, looked nice and clean, it was a good price, so I bought it. However, when I received it, this is what I got. 49 grams of dust. Uh, needless to say, I was disappointed. Uh, and I ha had in my hands a 157 gram piece of rusted garbage. It took a little bit of effort, but after a while, a little bit of grinding. I got it down to the base metal. It seems to be pretty stable, but it wasn't very pretty. So I decided I was going to do some electrolysis and some re-etching and polishing just to see if I could do it. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. This is my homemade electrolysis tank and I'm de-rusting an Alatai uh, slice that I have that was very rusted. Got hooked up to my battery charger. And since it's a smart charger, it won't charge unless there's a slight trickle on it, so I put a little computer power supply in parallel with the diode in there to prevent any feedback from one power supply to the other. Um, you can see it's bulbing away. That's the Alatai slice. And there's the two anodes. I got both sides going, so it cooks really fast. Playing about an amp and a half right now. So I'm going to let that run for a week or two, see what happens. I've already cooked this once before, but it didn't seem to, um, it took pretty good, but it could be better. I've made a few changes to my electrolysis tank. I've eliminated the battery charger and also eliminated the auxiliary power supply. In its place, I bought a little DC power supply. I set it to 12 volts and it's pulling 1.63 amps currently. And I'm going to let this run until tomorrow. I just make sure it's stable, things are working okay. It's the same piece of Alatai. Got the same iron plates being used as anodes. Now, once I'm happy with this, I also bought a piece of graphite. This is a block that's uh, 200 millimeters long, 100 millimeters wide, and 10 millimeters thick. Um, the advice from Greg Zleiman uh, says that uh, these don't corrode. The problem with the iron plates is that they do get rusty. They have to be sanded occasionally, otherwise the, the current drops off. So that's where we're at, and we'll see how this works. And uh, more to come. I've updated my setup now. I've taken out the iron anodes, the iron plates, and I've put in instead the graphite plate that I purchased. I've put in some brand new water, distilled about one gallon, and I've also put in some pH up which has potassium carbonate to create the electrolyte. I put in about oh, two ounces or so to a gallon of distilled water. So we're going to see how this works. Let's turn the power on. So it's set to 12 volts. And it's pulling right now apparently half an amp. Or it was pulling an amp and a half before, so the electrolyte isn't as strong as before. But we are getting bubbles on the graphite, which is what it's supposed to do. You go negative on the cathode, positive on the anode. And we'll let that go for a little while, see what happens. Since the current was so low, I've added another two ounces of the uh, pH up. 
as you can see, the current has about doubled. Uh, so that is better. I'm happy with that level. So we'll let that go for a week or so and see what the results are. It's been about 15 days and I think the, the electrolysis is complete. I uh, changed out the water a couple of days ago and it really hasn't changed color. It's still clear. So I'm going to let this go for maybe two more days and if nothing happens then I'm going to stop the process and polish it up. Could be work complete. So I think we're going to finish this up. The water's still clear. There's black residue on the bottom of the of the tank. I think that's just graphite. Anyway, we're going to turn the power off and complete this process. So polish the piece up and see what happens. So this is the piece taken out of the tank, and it's kind of black. So let's. Uh, Undo the wire and uh, take dry it off and see what's what. I dried the piece off and cleaned it up with some 4 out steel wool. Looks pretty good. Uh, I think I'm still going to sand a little bit more to bring out some more of the etch. I re-etch it with some ferrochloride, then you use some neutralizer on it. And after that dried out, um, you know, go through the process of preserving it. I'll probably coat it with some paleo bond. But right now it's looking not too bad. This is the slice that came out of the electrolysis tank. I went ahead and polished it up. Now, I am an amateur, so please don't judge me harshly. Um, I had to use the palm sander because that's all I have available. So to polish it, I started with some 80 grit paper to smooth off the rough edges. Went to 100 grit, 120, 150, 220, 320, and finally 1500. And the results are okay. It's shiny. It's not pretty, but it wasn't a precise slice to begin with. And this is basically putting lipstick on a pig. So we're going to go ahead and uh, next up, I think we're going to etch it with some ferrochloride and we're going to see how the results come out. So more to come. I've got my slice in a little plastic tray. I've got my ferrochloride and neutralizer ready to go. These are products from Paleo Bond. Um, after we're done, we're going to coat it with some uh, the meteorite corrosion protection spray. So we're going to see how this goes. Since I only have two hands, I can't share the process, I'll share the results. I've completed the etching process and the results are pretty spectacular. It's got a nice bold etch, came out nice and smooth. Um, both sides are very nice. This is the other side. So the next step is to dry it out and then put on the meteorite top coat to preserve it and hopefully this will all be all I have to do to it. More to come. I completed the processing on the slice. Uh, first I soaked it for 24 hours in isopropyl alcohol. Following that I baked it for three hours at 225 in an oven to remove any moisture. Um, following that and of course, let it cool down. I applied a coat of the meteorite corrosion protection, Paleo Bond. Um, I, I let that set for about an hour and I put it into an oven to, to remove the tackiness. Um, once that was done, cooled it down, went back to the sanding, just a real light sanding to remove the surface bumps. Uh, put a second coat on, cooked that. And most of the tackiness is gone. I think there's still a little bit left. But I think we're done. Came out pretty nice. I think it's going to be well preserved. And it's going to go back on my shelf. And hopefully it doesn't rust anymore after all this uh, processing is done. So I think we're finished. I didn't like the tacky finish I got with the Paley Bond spray. So I stripped it off. I sanded the surface back to its base metal, re etched it. And then I'm applying this. Automotive clear coat finish. According to Craig Zleiman, if I can pronounce his name correctly, it gives a better finish, it's harder, it gives just as good protection. So we're going to do that and uh, see how it turns out. So stay tuned. I've completed the spraying process. I did two thin coats, one thick coat. I did one side yesterday and the other side today, give it plenty of time to cure. So let's see what the results are. So we've got 
a nice even finish. It's hard and smooth. There's no tackiness whatsoever. It's got a very nice Woodman Stutton pattern. I'm just in love with this pattern. Here's the other side. So I think we're going to call it a day on this one. I think it's finished. So it's going to go inside on my display shelf and we'll see what happens to it in a few months if it's stable or if we start seeing signs of rust. Because right now there's absolutely no rust on this thing. It's absolutely clean. I'm very happy with the results I got on this piece. The improvements to the process have really helped a lot. I'm getting a better result. So with that, uh, I'd like to give a big shout out to Craig Zleiman for his advice uh, and encouragement. I've tried a few of his techniques and they really work. So Craig, thanks. So there you have it. That's the entire process I used to salvage this piece of Alatai. It's lengthy, um, but that's not even the longest it can get. Uh, it depends on how rusty your piece is. It could go a lot longer, maybe a little bit shorter, but that's generally the process. So with that, I'll wrap it up and say goodbye.